Thank you. Uh, today's webinar is from 9 until 1030 and we are going to talk about determining accommodations for job seekers with mental health conditions. Oftentimes, employment success is related to the quality and type of supports that individuals receive on and off the job. Many times, in individuals that we work with, job seekers that we're working with, may not be aware of what types of supports or accommodations are available that might help to mitigate or um, lessen some of the um, barriers that they may experience that are preventing some success or tenure. So we're hoping today to address some of those functional implications or limitations and barriers due to a mental health condition and discuss different ways to help individuals identify what accommodations might work best, what types of supports. Um, so, I'm going to get started with our three main objectives today. We're really going to look at the different methods to assess employment related implications of a mental health condition. We're going to explore some of the ways to determine the need for accommodations and other types of supports or skill development. And then we're also going to apply some of the accommodations to address specific work related support needs. So yeah, continue to use the chat, but we're gonna get started. When we think about accommodations, really the rationale for accommodations in the work setting is to uh, really look at and address, address the functional implication issues that might be related to an individual's mental health condition or those barriers that need to be addressed and or accommodated. We also, want to explore accommodations in the work setting to help individuals explore other types of compensatory strategies, ways to compensate for barriers that they may be experiencing due to the mental health condition. Uh, ideally, accommodations are set to allow for longer tenure and to improve performance in the, in the job setting. Workers oftentimes need tailored accommodations to match what functioning or what um, limitations they may be experiencing because of the mental health condition or the implications of the mental health conditions. Ideally, practitioners and certainly employment specialists need to be trained in identifying what those functional implications of a mental health condition might be and how to match an accommodation or support based on those implications. For today's webinar, we're really going to be primarily looking at accommodations, more formal accommodations, and talking about reasonable accommodations through um, the Americans with Disabilities Act. So why don't we get started? We have a lot to cover, but First, let's have a, a quick check-in and you can use your chat. Um, who decides on accommodations? So if you were to think about um, who would be the person to decide on an accommodation, how, how, who is that person typically? So you can use the chat to just jot down an answer or if you're able to unmute your mics, I'm not sure if, um, we have that. Oh, I don't think you do have that capacity during the webinar. Um, but who? Oh, we have a chat. The person needing the accommodation, the employers, um, an HR person, the job seeker. So many people can be the person, um, the combination of an institution and the individual identifying what would be helpful for them. Absolutely. So um, collaborating with the job seeker, collaborating with the person who needs the accommodation, a human resource officer and supervisor might collaborate with the employee. But let's think about whether or not um, an HR person or the medical professional in this situation, it might be the psychiatrist, would they have familiarity with accommodations and what accommodations might be more useful for a person? Um, Typically, no, 
most of that falls on the individual themselves or an employment specialist if they're working in um, an employment setting such as your supported employment program or DVR. So those decisions are usually left to the job seeker or the job coach, uh, voc rehab counselor or others. Um, oftentimes the HR professionals may not know specifically what types of accommodations would work best. They may have some ideas, but they won't necessarily know how that person's mental health condition might actually impact how they perform on the job. So I'm, I'm kind of having this check in just to reinforce the importance of how uh, the importance of, of educating job seekers that we're working with, how we as professionals um, in the employment services field and vocational rehabilitation really do need to be familiar with how to help someone assess and determine the need for an accommodation and also help someone identify what types of accommodations would work best in certain situations. But again, having that discussion with the person, uh, we're going to talk about how to help the person assess what types of accommodations or supports might be most useful to them. So we're going to get into some very specific ways to help the person identify what type of accommodation would be helpful. What are some of the limitations or barriers I may be experiencing because of the mental health condition? An employee may know what has worked in the past. An employee may know uh, based on outside of work experiences that they have, um, what types of limitations or functional implications they may experience because of the mental health condition. So they will certainly be a wealth of information and, and you as providers can certainly help along um, and, and provide some resources. We're going to talk very briefly about some of the laws, particularly the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's just it's celebrating its 30th year this year. Um, the ADA, just as a quick refresher, prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability and employment, public services, public accommodations, transportation and telecommunications. We're going to focus, of course, today on Title I, which is employment, and Title I requires employers who have 15 or more employees, so some of those smaller mom and pop organizations may not fall within the realm or the, or the uh, purview of ADA, but it's important for us to have this information to provide an equal opportunity to qualified individuals. Um, qualified individuals are individuals or job seekers or applicants who can perform the essential functions of a job. Um, the person meets the skills, the experience, the education or other requirements of an employment position that they're intending to seek or, or may currently hold if we're talking about a current employee. Um, they're able to perform those essential functions with or without reasonable accommodation. So that's where we're going to begin our discussion of accommodations today. But before we move on, are there any questions that you may have regarding ADA or qualified individual with a disability? There's a website here on this um, slide with lots of information about this. If you wanted to dig a little bit deeper, we don't really have that opportunity today in the time allotted for us to really go very far into um, the, the legal, and I'm certainly not qualified to provide that legal type of information, but use the resources. I have a ton of resources at the end of the webinar um, to, to, for you to look at. We're going to try to look at a few today if we're able to get on some of the websites, but if you have questions, it's a smallish group. We have about 40 people. So please um, just use the chat and ask questions as we go along. So we're thinking of when we think about accommodations, we're really looking at 
accommodations are there to eliminate the barriers caused by the disability. And we're going to talk about specific limitations or barriers or other functional implications caused by certain disabilities. In our case today, we're going to really focus on the mental health conditions that you may be encountering and, and um, folks that you're working with. The way we develop accommodations, we want to identify what those essential functions are. And we'll talk a little bit about how to do that or how to help the job seekers that you're working with identify what those essential functions are. As we mentioned when we did our review of the ADA, employed workers, job seekers must be able to perform the essential functions of a job with or without accommodations. Um, secondly, we would need to identify need. So there must be a need for the reasonable accommodation. So it, it must be something that the person needs. Um, and that's determined by looking at how symptoms may interfere with performing some of the critical skills that are necessary in the work setting. So when we think about essential functions, and again, this um, website will provide lots of good information. It's the ADA um, network. So they have lots of, of solid, great information for lots of ADA regulations and other types of legal um, issues related to the Americans with Disabilities Act. But there are a couple of things that we want to consider and when we're helping someone determine what the essential functions are and whether or not they're able to perform that. Um, a lot of that is written in the job description. I don't know if you're all kind of familiar if you've applied for jobs recently or just helped when you're helping individuals that you're working with now notice that there are essential functions written into job descriptions typically. Um, so those essential functions are those tasks or responsibilities that are critical to performing the, the job and um, you know there's lots that go into designing uh, the, the uh, job um, um, you know the, the job functions and and there's a lot to do with um, you know the, the the roles that people have so the HR departments typically outline what those essential fun functions are um, and they are based on time spent in the in in that doing that particular task. Um, are they critical to the job? If they weren't, um, if the person isn't able to do those, would the job still be able to be performed? So the ADA does not relieve an employee or a job seeker from any um, obligation to perform those essential functions. It's really intended to enable a person with a disability to comp compete in the workplace based on the same performance standards and requirements that other employers that employers expect of other employees um, who don't have a disability. So again, an employee or a prospective employee would need to perform the essential functions with or without a, a reasonable accommodation. So for example, and an employee might be hired to uh, type in different documents, kind of working at, at, in the keyboard, um, keyboarding in or data entry, and the ability to accurately um, type in the data is really critical or an essential function of that particular position. It's the reason why that position exists. Um, so that would be considered an essential function. But going through the job app, the op, job application or the job um, list of requirements helps you and the person really look at what are those essential functions of the job and can the person complete those with or without an accommodation. So when we, when we are moving into our discussion about accommodations, what a reasonable accommodation is, is a modification or an adjustment to different tasks or the environment 
or the way that things are usually done to help individuals with disabilities to have this equal opportunity to be able to participate in work, um, even education requirements or education settings. We're gonna really talk mostly about work today, um, but having an, an accommodation allows an employee to access all of the employment, um, you know, what's provided to others without a, a disability. Any questions so far on reasonable accommodations? The bottom line is a re reasonable accommodation is really a change or adjustment that can enable a worker with a disability to enjoy all of the um, equal benefits and privileges of others without a disability. And that includes in the hiring. So if someone needs an accommodation in the hiring stage, that would need to be set up at first. So an example that comes to mind is someone who um, may not leave the home or may have um, limitations due to a mental health condition that is really difficult for that person to, to be out in the community. So a potential accommodation might be allowing that person to have a remote interview or remote discussion with an employer so that that person doesn't need to go in person. Um, similarly, someone in a wheelchair may need to request a similar type of accommodation for the hiring if, if the building or setting where the in interview is to take place isn't something that's um, accessible, then that could be, again, another accommodation, either having it someplace different or having it be a remote type of interview. So those changes enable people with disabilities to enjoy all of the um, privileges and benefits of a work setting. I, come, oh, I have a question. Okay, Denise is asking, how about productivity? Would a person with a mental illness be required to equally be equally as productive as an able-bodied worker? Productivity is, um, when we're thinking about accommodations, we're really looking at ways to help um, that individual gain access to, to the, the job tasks that, that others are, are doing. And, and employers are not required to lessen requirements or, um, or, or create um, specialized ways of doing certain jobs. If it lessens productivity, um, an employer can, can determine if, if a reasonable accommodation causes an undue hardship which means financially or in the running of the business, is, um, is this accommodation going to provide an undue hardship for that employer? So if productivity standards are lessened for an individual with a disability, that may in fact, or the employer may in fact be able to say that that's causing hardship or an undue hardship on the functioning of the business. So they may be able to decline a request to lessen productivity standards. Typically accommodations um, won't address productivity, but provide other ways for the person with a disability to continue to perform the essential functions, meeting the requirements set for the employer in a way that's reasonable um, without causing undue hardship on the functioning of the business, as well as enabling the person to still access that employment setting. Um, Heidi's writing, now that we see many employers are working remotely, uh, do you foresee more people being able to work from home as a reasonable accommodation? I think that this last eight months, in my opinion, has really set the stage for many of those types of remote opportunities to be more um, available and more um, favorable. I think employers are beginning to see that it's feasible and it's possible. And I think that type of accommodation may be something that employers who 
traditionally wouldn't be willing to consider that may be now more inclined to allow work from home as an accommodation. So I, yes, in my opinion, I think that it probably is going to um, be more, a more available accommodation. And it still can be an accommodation. Um, and we're gonna talk about whether that might be a reasonable accommodation or not. So before we move on, if you have any more questions, please just write those in the chat. We're gonna talk about some accommodation ideas for specific mental health conditions. Um, more importantly, we're really going to look at kind of the, um, the limitations or the functional implications. So functionally, how is the mental health condition affecting or impacting someone? So, we're going to look at a few examples, but we're also going to go on to the Job Accommodation Network's website and explore that a little bit further just to get a better sense of um, more expansive. These are just some ideas. So for example, someone may have some difficulties maintaining stamina. A person may um, be taking medications or the effects of the medications may be impacting their ability to um, remain, you know, maintain stamina throughout the day. Some accommodation ideas might be a flexible schedule, longer breaks, more frequent breaks. So maybe breaking up the um, break time if someone has an hour long break or a half an hour break, maybe more frequent, shorter breaks. So the person is still um, having that, you know, within that half an hour or um, are able to still have the same break time as others, but maybe it's spread out a little bit differently. Additional time to learn new responsibilities. So if someone is having a hard time concentrating at the end of the day because their stamina is not really where um, it, it needs to be to kind of retain information or they're just really tired and just can't really focus at the end of the day, helping to provide some additional time to learn new responsibilities. Someone may need time off for counseling another idea, and these are all through the Job Accommodation Network's Accommodation and Compliance Series. Um, again, all of, this, all of these resources are in the slide deck and you'll have access to those, but these are just some examples, maintaining concentration. So someone might have a hard time concentrating due to a mental health condition. An accommodation might be to help that person reduce distractions. So if they're working in a very open space, like that one picture I just showed, all of those cubbies together and, and it's very open and lots of people are using the phone or typing or, um, you know, just a, there's a lot of distractions. A way to minimize those distractions might be help the person find or relocate to an area that's not so distracting, move their desk to an area. So if someone is near a copy machine and you know it's very loud or people are walking by constantly, a way to reduce those distractions might be to move the person's desk to another area, um, allowing white noise or other types of sound machines could be really useful for someone, particularly if they're working in a large warehouse setting. Um, where there's a lot of echo and a lot of noise that sort of bounces off like very high ceilings, having white noise might be something of an accommodation. And we didn't really talk about informal types of accommodations, but there may be, an employer may allow all employees to use white noise. So it may not be something that needs to be formally requested. It could be something that an employer allows all employees to wear headphones or or um, air, you know, ear, earbuds or whatever it might be to reduce um, the noise or just in general, that may be something. If that's not something that the employer typically allows or that's not something that's within um, the job description or, or, you know, policies or practices, that may need to be an accommodation if that's something to help someone reduce distractions or maintain concentration. I'm gonna look in the chat, looks like we have um, Minette, fun fact, accommodations for people with disabilities are often very helpful. Yes, this is a, a great point. Minette is um, noting that accommodations for people with disabilities are often very helpful for people without disabilities. 
as well. Absolutely. I think, um, you know, that's one of the skills that you as employment specialists or voc rehab counselors can really provide to employers. You can help employers and this builds relationships with the employers. This helps the employer really see the value in your service and what you provide as, a, as an SE program or voc rehab agency, but you can provide some assistance to employers with helping them look at ways um, that would be helpful for all employees, right? Um, it, environmental sound machines are probably useful in lots of different environments. Soothing music, diff, helpful in lots of environments. Dividing large assignments into smaller tasks and goals. That may be something that could, again, like Minette said, be transferable to many employees in that setting. So oftentimes when you're working closely with an employer along with the job seeker, you're really helping that employer um, identify practices that may in fact enable them to work better or improved productivity or identify strategies to improve mental health among uh, the general workforce that they're that they're working with. So that's a great point, Minette. Some other ideas might be if an employee has difficulty staying organized and meeting deadlines, um, making daily to-do lists, um, a supervisor might remind the employee of important deadlines that need to be, you know, maybe email or um, an accommodation might be maybe the employer has, um, you know, a way to use some sort of uh, calendar reminder, calendar app, and sync it with the employee as an accommodation to remind of important deadlines or important tasks that need to be completed. Electronic organizers, assistive technology, talk a tiny bit at the end about what assistive technology is, but um, you know, different types of tools or, or resources. Like I know one comes to mind is a smart pen. So um, the smart pen allows the person who's taking notes to record certain parts of a meeting or a lecture if you're using it for a course, but you're able to um, use a certain type of paper. And as you're writing, there's a way that certain parts of the conversation can be recorded so that you're able to remember what was said without having to take copious, you know, really detailed notes, which sometimes is hard to, um, hard to do if you're trying to concentrate on what the person is saying. If someone has difficulties with their memory, written instructions, instead of giving a list, a verbal list, maybe a written list of instructions or other um, ways to provide those written instructions um, so the person does remember those. And allow additional training time. You'll see that quite a bit for many of the accommodation ideas. Provide written checklists. So maybe at the end of the day or the end of the week or whatever time period works for the job seeker or the individual working, um, a checklist might be something that the supervisor can review with the individual or coworker. So these are all types of accommodations that presented to the employer um, allow that individual with a disability to, again, be able to enjoy all of the benefits, all of the, um, everything that the job setting has to offer for people with or without disabilities. Handling stress, so that may be something if someone has um, an anxiety disorder and has a hard time or has panic attacks um, and stress exacerbates that, allowing that person a phone call to a job coach or another support person or, or take a break as needed to um, help to minimize any of the stress that the person begins to feel that might lead to any type of um, sort of exacerbated anxiety or panic attack. So let's think about, um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to go on here, maybe um, sometimes it's, it's always such a 
you know, up in the air with Zoom, whether or not it's going to cooperate or not, but I'm going to try and we're going to go in and I'm going to show you some of the tools that Jan has to offer because they have listings of so many different types of um, accommodation ideas based on different limitations that the person might be experiencing or barriers that the person might be experiencing. Um, in the chat, just write yes or no or Y or N. How many people are familiar with Jan? Just if you could just quickly give me just a quick little head count. Yes, yes, no, yes, yes, no. <laughs> um, okay, so it's if we were to do a little straw poll, it looks like there's probably 50%. Yeah, yes, maybe, maybe, a, maybe looks like a few more no's are coming in. Um, the Job Accommodation Network is grant funded, housed, I think it's West Virginia University. I'm not 100% sure. I guess we'll see when we go on, but housed um, to provide free information, free resources. They also have live chats where you can speak directly with someone by the by phone or engage in a an email type of chat or online chat where you can ask questions in real time and have an expert in that particular area address what your questions are. So they have someone who is um, designated as an expert to address mental health related questions and concerns. So when you're in the chat, you can ask for um, an expert if you're interested and they'll walk through the process. They'll walk through how to request an accommodation. What do I need to say? How much information do I need to provide? What do I as a job seeker need to disclose to a certain, um, to, to the employer? Who do I talk to? Do I talk to HR? Do I talk to a supervisor? The folks at Jan have experts who can walk people through those questions and really provide a lot of, um, you know, it's very empowering when the person, and maybe you alongside of the person, or it might be needed to be done remotely, um, can ask those questions and they could get those responses, um, whether it's with you or, or not with you, but Jan is available for people to, um, to access to get a lot of that information. So, but before we move on, think about someone that you're working with. Um, think about anybody that you're you're working with, whether it's through Voc Rehab, we have some Voc Rehab counselors, or in your supported employment service. And think about, and let's use the chat again, think about what types of limitations the person might be experiencing. So because of the mental health condition, maybe you can write down, but again, you know, this is all, we want to maintain everyone's confidentiality. So don't give too much information. Don't give very specific information so that others might know who you're talking about. But what is the mental health condition? Or more importantly, what are the limitations or functional implications that the person is experiencing? So what are those limitations the person might be experiencing due to um, the mental health condition. So in other words, how do these limitations affect the job seekers or potential employees job performance. So think about someone you're working with. I'm going to, we're kind of going to begin applying some of what we're learning with real individuals that you're working with or, or have worked with so that we can really look at how um, Yes, Heidi, I did. It is, it's a free resource. So it's free and I used to teach a class in supported employment and we had students um, as a, one of their assignments go through and um, a, pro, a project where they went and, and used the job accommodation network and the one expert that I spoke with prior to the students all you know, bombarding them with questions said, we really, we want questions. We want people to um, to use the service. It's, um, you know, it's a service that is grant funded and, and they continue to provide this resource um, as a way to, you know, they want to continue the grant. So they want people to use it. Okay, so Think about um, 
what limitation the employee is experiencing and how do these limitations affect their job performance? What types of tasks are problematic or, or difficult because of or as a result of these limitations? So Heidi, I've had many different situations. One person comes to mind is someone who's very functional and intelligent, but due to her mental health, there are periods she cannot function. So what are, um, and then you wanna think through that Heidi with, with her and, and think about um, past employment experiences. What specifically is, is she having a difficult time performing? What job tasks are specifically problematic as a result of these limitations? Is it an, an ability to concentrate? Is it an ability to stay organized? Is it an ability to prioritize um, what tasks need to be done? So are there memory concerns or, or, or issues that need to be addressed? So thinking about one of those, um, and when you're writing in the chat, make sure you write to all panelists and attendees if you want everyone to see your response. So I'll wait another 30 seconds to see if others wanted to jump in and talk about um, limitations the job seeker or potential employee might be seeking, how do they impact the person's job performance, and what specific job tasks are problematic as a result of these limitations. Okay, so Amanda, currently I have a client who has P PTSD um, and debilitating panic attacks when wearing a mask outside of COVID-19 issues, any situations when feeling enclosed or trapped. Um, so thinking about different types of job tasks that might be problematic as a result of these limitations. So, um, you know, maybe again, it may not be a job task, it may be um, the environment. So maybe in this person's case, being out in that open floor plan of, a, of an open office might not be very helpful in terms of minimizing panic attacks that might increase them more or, um, you know, any, if it says anytime she feels enclosed or trapped. So if she's, you know, if her desk is facing a certain way, maybe that's something that she needs to be mindful of maybe that feeling of, um, you know, being able to see the door or being able to see a way to get out of that office or get out of that situation is something that for her might need to be an accommodation if that's if her desk is situated in a way that she feels enclosed or trapped, maybe a possible accommodation would be to have it be more open and in view of or have a sight line of a door or another way so that she's not feeling trapped. But yes, I mean, these are the types of discussions to begin having with people. Um, so before we move into looking at the job accommodation website, I just want to go into talking about what is an employment implication. So it's really, we can really frame it as an employment implication or a limitation that the person might have because of a mental health condition. So um, an employment implication of mental health conditions might be how the symptoms that are related to that condition affect the worker, either in the work setting. So um, the example that was just brought up with the person with PTSD. So in that work setting, the way that person's work um, space is situated might have an impact if, if that person's prone to debilitating panic attacks, not being able to see an escape route or a way to get out could impact the work setting. Um, in outside of the work setting, so if, if that person knows that wearing a mask or um, you know feeling enclosed or trapped is something that is um, sort of a limitation or, or an implication of having panic attacks, then that may be some 
some cues into what might be helpful in terms of accommodation. So you're, begin to, you're beginning to identify how and assessing how the employment implication um, can be addressed and what barrier can be mitigated through an accommodation. So um, it could also be in completing the tasks of a job. So as we mentioned, some accommodations help someone organize or prioritize or um, with scheduling. So an employment implication might be related to stay concentrating or staying organized or meeting deadlines. And it might and probably will vary by environment. So just because a previous job, the person needed an accommodation for a certain employment implication or limitation, a new environment might look very different to that person. So helping that person assess whether or not that new environment could be um, different and what types of accommodations may or may not work based on that environment. They might vary by job description. Some job descriptions, essential duties might look very different than other job descriptions. So you would wanna help the person look at the job description and it might vary by the nature of the condition. So for example, there's a continuum from mental health all the way to disability, right? So um, we all kind of fall within that continuum. So we're feeling mentally healthy. And then, you know, there might be some areas or dips in our lives that we're not feeling as, you know, the, 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 our mental wellness might be diminishing for certain reasons. Um, so individuals with mental health conditions, we know it's not just the straight course. So people may have times where they're feeling really well, and there may be other times the cyclical nature of a mental health condition um, also needs to be taken into consideration. So they're, you know, just because it worked when someone was really um, feeling the impact of symptoms, so if someone's symptoms were really at a point in their life where they were really impactful and, and impacted and affected the job um, doesn't necessarily mean that person is still in that same situation. So really it varies um, based on, on where the person is at in terms of their mental health condition. So when we think about assessing employment implications of mental health symptoms, some of the questions to consider might be um, how is the worker's daily functioning affected by the presence of the mental health condition? So thinking about, um, you know, just helping that person talk through or examine closely daily, how is their functioning affected by whatever the mental health condition might be? So the person that you brought up about with PTSD and uh, panic attacks, how is that person's daily functioning impacted or affected by the presence? So that helps us to assess potential employment implications. You know, we can't say we've already addressed that it varies by setting and we're not saying that just because someone feels a certain way at home or it impacts them at home, it's going to necessarily impact them at work, but it is a way to begin to assess um, if the person hasn't worked in a number of years or doesn't have any past experiences to draw on, we can certainly use daily functioning as a, as a way to gauge how the um, employment, the symptoms may impact um, or cause limitations or the barriers that it might cause in the work environment. So think about what, what are the barriers that it causes? Are the barriers um, related to interacting with others? Are the barriers related to getting the job completed? Um, are the barriers related to being able to um, organize the day's tasks or complete the day's tasks within a certain time frame? So what barrier does the mental health symptom or, or the implication cause? Is the treatment or medication causing some of the impact, right? So does the medication or treatment for the condition have side effects? Are those side effects something that 
potentially are causing barriers. So is the person who has a hard time maintaining stamina, is it related to the medication or other treatment that the person might be experiencing? So helping that person look at, um, you know, those side effects from medications and other treatment. Um, and how do the limitations affect the worker's ability to perform in the employment environment? So that could be based on previous experiences the person has. Um, that could be based on what the person, person anticipates. Maybe they've had similar limitations or, or problems in school settings that could transfer to different employment settings. Um, so these are just some ways to begin assessing the employment implications of a mental health symptom. So let's look a little more into what does it look like? So when we think about what this looks like, um, hang on one second, sorry. So if we think about the functional implication might be screening out external distractions. So someone who might have um, an anxiety disorder uh, might have a difficult time or an inability to screen out or filter out different distractions. Um, they might be able to not, they might not be able to block out sounds or sights or even odors which might impact how they focus on different tasks. So the barriers that that, or the trouble that the person might be experiencing might be that they aren't, aren't able to concentrate in a team meeting, right? While they're sitting near a window looking at, overlooking a park. So that might have, um, they, they might have some trouble with concentrating or staying engaged or being, you know, include, involved with a team meeting they may also not be able to focus on reports. Um, they might have a hard time with employees or coworkers interrupting them if they're entering different, you know, as they're entering data. So a lot of these barriers are, um, could, could be potential problems, right? But they also could be addressed through accommodations. Can, before we move on, are, are you seeing my screen okay? Something weird just happened with my computer. I just, if somebody could just write in the chat, yes or no, it's, it, you can see it. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Just sometimes you don't know from, from this end, but let's think about John, who is working as a potential, as a, as a, in an office, as a computer programmer. Let's think about Sorry. Okay, I know something weird just happened. Darn, darn Zoom. Okay, bear with me. I'm going to take us to our slide. So, sorry. Okay. So, think about an example, John working as an office computer programmer. And here's some of the, the functional implication might be that he's unable to screen out external distractions. He has a, a, an inability to block out sounds and sights and odors. He's having trouble uh, concentrating. He's not able to focus on different reports or or notes he needs to write because he's in a real high traffic area. What do you think some possible accommodations might be to address some of these concerns that he's had that he has? You can use the chat to just identify what are some allow him to wear headphones. Absolutely. So he could wear headphones might help screen out some of the sound, move to a less trafficy area. Yep, move his desk to a, an area that doesn't have as many, um, as much traffic, absolutely. So those are some potential accommodations that could really help him. So 
So now we are going to go into um, the Job Accommodation Network. So bear with me. I'm going to hopefully we'll be able to get back. But all right. So I'm going to start a new share. Okay. And so are you guys seeing ADA, um, Job Accommodation Network? Just give me a quick, okay, good. All right, so this takes you right to um, a different uh, a discussion about mental health impairments and kind of gives you, I'll just scroll through very, very briefly gives you some ideas of what different types of, you know, it's all in alphabetical order, different types of mental health conditions. But what is really interesting is they give a whole section on accommodating employees with mental health conditions. And here are some key accommodations. So they give some examples, flexible schedule. And when you click on each of these examples, it gives you some additional resources or some additional um, apps or other ways to help the person. So I'm just going to stroll, scroll on through. So accommodation ideas. So if you click on attentiveness or concentration, it'll give you a list of different products. Some are free, some I, I don't know if you would need to purchase, but many of them are just sort of really inexpensive ways to um, accommodate this particular um, difficulty or limitation that the person might have. So if you notice um, noise canceling headphones, sun boxes and lights, so that might help someone with concentration issues if they have a sun box. Um, my daughter uses one and it's right on her desk. So for her to complete her schoolwork, it really is helpful. Services that might be helpful are different job coaches, strategies, so they really go through lots of different accommodation ideas that could um, that could really improve that person's ability to to perform certain tasks. So that so flexible schedule, job restructuring, written instructions, and so on. So these are just again resources that you and the individual you're working with can go through and identify different ones that might be useful. Sometimes people are unfamiliar with what, what might be helpful or what might not be helpful. So it's helpful for you and the person just to get some ideas on what might be a good um, resource and, and strategy that they may not have thought about. So again, it gives you a nice um, a nice kind of jump off point to begin the discussion and to begin thinking and helping the person look at what might be useful. Okay, so let's move back. And we have a couple of activities that I wanted to get to. Oops. Okay. All right, so I don't know why this is giving me problems today. I'm sorry. Um, just give me one second. So we're going to go into looking a little further. Can you guys see that? I hate to keep asking, but I appreciate when you just yes or no in the chat. All right, perfect. Okay, so let's move into how we connect employment implications and accommodations. Thank you. Um, so this is a, a worksheet. You're more than welcome to print it off and, and use it. But when we think about the mental health condition, we want to identify what it might be. So, you know, maybe it's a, someone has depression or 
uh, PTSD, like that was mentioned in the chat. What are the symptoms to help kind of think through what are some of the symptoms that the person experiences? What are some of the limitations or functional implications of the mental health condition or the symptoms related to that? And then what are some possible accommodations? And it could be accommodations or support needs or even skill development. So you can identify um, any of those areas to help the person mitigate what some of those limitations might be. So think about, again, if you want to think about a person that you're working with um, in an employment setting that they, they were uh, working within, what types of limitations did they experience due to the symptoms related to their mental health condition? What were the implications? Um, so again, if you want to use the chat box to identify the person's employment setting. So, you know, give a little bit of information. If you have experience with someone who had limitations due to that they experienced some limitations due to the disability and what were the implications for employment. All right, I don't see anything in the chat. So why don't we move on. So Here's an example we can use um, and I'd like us to kind of put it all together and think of um, a way to help this person. Kurt is an office manager. You can read along uh, for a, a local nonprofit organization. He's been treated in the past for symptoms related to a bipolar disorder. His job tasks include filing monthly activity reports, coordinating training events for the training team, assisting the director with scheduling fundraising events, and completing the annual budget. In past jobs, he's always had difficulty meeting deadlines and staying focused on specific tasks. Luckily, this job is pretty flexible uh, with their deadlines and he can work from home when he has difficulty concentrating. Kurt's job duties have changed and he's now supervising three of the office staff. He's required to be in the office at least three days a week. And because he's constantly, um, because he is constantly interrupted by the office staff, he now oversees, he's really having even a more difficult time concentrating and staying focused. He's getting very little sleep at night. Uh, which is a symptom of, of his bipolar disorder, which really impacts his concentration even more. So this lack of sleep is really impacting his concentra concentration even more so. He's having a hard time remembering the additional job duties he's required to perform, and he's uh, been struggling with paying attention during mandatory meetings. He's not meeting required deadlines, he's not sleeping at night, and he's becoming quite tired with little stamina throughout the day. His attendance is suffering as well, and he's been late to work a lot during the week. Um, he's having a hard time dealing with these workplace changes. More, more, the most significant change is now being required to be in, in the office and supervising staff, and he's considering leaving his job because of the added stress. So, Let's look at Kurt's example. What are some of the functional implications or the limitations or barriers he's experiencing because of his mental health condition? You use the chat. So what are some problems that Kurt is experiencing now? Okay, let's see. Difficulty sleeping, lack of stamina, attention issues, absolutely so. Um, he's having trouble when staff interrupts, so feeling overwhelmed, paying attention. So let's, let's, let's think of one of these. So let's pull out one, uh, paying attention. So he's having a hard time paying attention. 
what, um, how is that impacting his job? So how is Kurt's inability to pay attention impacting his job duties? He's missing deadlines. Uh, yep, he's missing out on important details. He's missing deadlines. So thinking just uh, uh, his clarity and judgment is, is off. Absolutely. So um, his attendance. So so this um, so paying attention is impacting lots of different job tasks, right? His ability to meet deadlines and so on. What are some possible accommodations? that might be useful for Kurt at this point. He may not have needed the accommodations early on, right? So um, that's another thing about reasonable accommodations. They can be requested when they are needed. Um, of course, if someone knows that they would need an accommodation early on, um, and that would be helpful, but an accommodation can be requested when the situation arises and the person needs it. Uh, yep, uh, uh, Katie writes, schedule flexibility. He could start later. Absolutely. So uh, Katie's writing, uh, his schedule could be uh, flexible. He might be able to start later in the day. That would give him more time in the morning to sleep. Um, use of a live scri life scribe pen. Yep. So those pens that could be really useful and take notes um, could help him in terms of remembering and and some of that will be recorded he could follow up with instructions and in write writing so he can review later absolutely barbara writes it sounds like he needs some days off some mental health time uh, to just heal and regroup and think of a strategy when did he last have time off so those are important discussions barbara to have with him when was the last time he had off what you know is he um would it be helpful to regroup and kind of just begin to strategize and and help him organize uh, these new changes in a way to sort of start fresh and and heal, as you mentioned. Um, Heidi writes, when staff wants to talk to him, they can make appointments or email or have certain times to talk, or he could see if he can come in earlier. Absolutely, these are all very, um, these, are, these are great suggestions. These are really um, helpful. Barbara is, uh, is Stuart, just so you know. Oh, okay. Barbara Stuart. Hey, Stuart. I used um, the wrong link to identify. All right. Sounds good, Stuart. But yes, I, those are great suggestions, um, whether it's Barbara or you um, having those. What are some other? So let's look at, okay. So we looked at paying attention. So let's look at, um, increased stress. So Denise wrote one of the functional implications right now is, is increased stress. Um, what could, how could, um, what are some accommodations to help mitigate or help to address this increased stress that he's having? Stuart mentioned maybe taking some time off and, and seeing if there's um, an opportunity for him to request a couple of days of a break. Are there other accommodations that you can think of that would help with the increased stress? Let's see. Um, Nanette, sleep hygiene, super important, impacts every other symptom. So yes, even helping him outside of, of an accommodation or, or even just more supports would be to help him uh, learn some, some additional sleep um, improvement. Let's see, um, let me just, including stress levels. Um, having a regular schedule in a regular setting can help tremendously. He seems to work better from home. I wonder if there's a way for him to supervise from home. Absolutely. And that could be something, again, that you and Kurt could be meeting around and discussing what would help him um, present the most favorable proposal, if you will, to the supervisor to really make sure, um, you know, he's, he's able to address and meet the essential functions. And maybe there is a way for him to work from home. Um, 
being able to call supports. Absolutely so. Having a, a phone call with a support during a time could be an, a reasonable accommodation. Natural support. So again, it may not need to be something that's formally addressed on the work site, but maybe Kurt could really rally his natural supports around him when he gets off work, be able to um, find some relaxation activities or ways to use natural supports to, um, to, to relax. He can delegate some tasks. Uh, Betsy writes, yes, that could be part of an accommodation if he's still you know, if the employer is able to accommodate that, there might be tasks he can delegate. So restructuring some of those job duties or restructuring some of the um, tasks and responsibilities that he's required to do. Denise, allow Kurt to work a flexible schedule so he can schedule self-care. Absolutely. So, um, you know, maybe he attends an exercise class and it's only offered in the morning. Again, maybe a flexible schedule to allow him to attend that would be something that the employer would uh, deem reasonable and allow allow that person, allow Kurt to, to do that. Stuart writes, encouraging him to get up and walk on his lunch breaks or other breaks. Lots of studies support this idea to have better clarity. Absolutely. So, um, you know, like we talked about the break times, maybe having smaller breaks throughout the day instead of one large break, maybe be able to um, have those smaller breaks and then he's able to use those to get out and get some fresh air if that's something that would be helpful. Um, yeah, so those two limitations or functional implications We've already kind of identified what types of supports, whether they're formal accommodations or many of you identified even some more informal types of supports that he can do on his own. Um, but that's kind of the, the how we begin to assess and develop these strategies, really helping someone look at what are some of those symptoms? Are those symptoms impacting the way the person's job performance is? Are they impacting um, the ability to, to do or complete certain tasks or continue with certain responsibilities? So we, we looked at this. Um, we're just gonna... So again, um, Stuart is reminding us, does he have someone to really process and, and catharsis with, encourage him to engage with a mental health provider? Absolutely. He may, he may need um, some support from you to help him connect with a mental health provider to be able to process and review some of the changes that might be going on. There might be more of a, of a need for, for therapeutic um, intera you know, intervention or, or discussion at this point. That's a great suggestion. So again, so the mental health condition, if we look at, at Kurt, bipolar disorder, symptoms, inability to sleep, right? So he's having a hard time concentrating, having a hard time, the functional implications are um, the, the concentration, paying attention, um, stress, and then we identified what those possible accommodations look like flexible schedule, possibly working from home. Um, some supports that he can implement might be accessing natural support. So people that aren't paid providers, people are natural to his, to his life, family, friends, other people, um, coworkers even are natural supports. And maybe that's another support to, um, to begin to look at. Are coworkers available to offer some sort of support or at least have um, discussions and, and offer some of those supports if that makes sense. And that's what, something that Kurt would be comfortable um, exploring. So we're gonna summarize, but I, I also want us to spend a few minutes looking at what's one tool or resource that you can use over the next week or so to help someone either assess determine um, access accommodations or um, 
you know, what's, what's one, or, one tool or resource you could use to help the person um, identify an accommodation that would match a functional implication that they might have. All right. Let's see. The worksheet or Jan, absolutely. I like the worksheet. Yep, yeah, that's it's kind of, you get to see um, the progression. You kind of help the person identify what, what the symptoms are and, and how those symptoms might be impacting their ability to perform certain tasks. Some a wealth of resources. Um, Job Accommodation Network is certainly a key resource in all of this. Um, this guide helps. Um, we didn't talk about it, but I wanted to make sure to give you some resources how to help someone negotiate and request an accommodation. We mentioned it earlier. The ADA Network, National Network, has lots of resources. Some of those I I referenced throughout ADA itself, you can access those. And then Disability Rights of Washington is a specific resource in your area that you can access for um, free experts, expert you know, suggestions and other, other um, individuals who can kind of point you in the right direction or work with you and individuals if you are having a difficult time. Um, Manette, other people with disabilities can be a great resource, absolutely. Um, using peers, people who have um, similar experiences and have, have um, different challenges related to, to work can also be great resources for people who are either considering going back to work or might be in work and unsure um, whether or not they can succeed. I think having someone, like you mentioned, be able to attest to the utility of certain accommodations and, and that accommodations can help a person access employment settings um, in spite of having limitations or functional implications due to mental health conditions. The reasonable accommodations, as we mentioned, the rationale is to really enable individuals with disabilities to enjoy all of the benefits and privileges of work settings that are enjoyed by people without disabilities. So if any questions, we do have a few minutes. We do have some time for questions and comments. And if people wanted to use some of the time to talk about how um, how the adjustment to remote services right now and where you're currently at in terms of um, any challenges that you're experiencing due to some of the remote services that you're now providing. This could be a really good opportunity to um, get support from your peers and others who might be encountering similar challenges. If we wanted to spend a minute or two seeing if anyone had anything. Yes, I will be sending out the PowerPoint um, with all of the resource links. Um, so yes, that will be sent out. And like I said, you could just use that worksheet um, from the presentation. And I, I have a, I can also send that worksheet out in, independent too. So you can have both. Sorry for some of the little technical hiccups, um, but yes, I'll, I'll send this out and you know continue to. You can use my email if you have additional questions that we didn't cover. If you want to um, further discuss anything that we didn't get a chance to review, um, Mel Minette is writing. Uh, people often don't know what they need or what would help or they feel like an employer may not provide the accommodation they need. So it was very helpful to know that an accommodation can be requested any times. Time gives time for brainstorming or discovery. Absolutely. So someone may not have experience on the job um, and may not know what types of accommodations would be useful. But certainly you don't want it 
the person doesn't want it to get to the point where they're missing lots of days or missing important deadlines and really um, not completing tasks. So you want to try to help them catch a problem or a barrier or a limitation early on so that an accommodation can be requested uh, before too much damage. I hate to say that, but too much damage has been done to that employment setting. So help the person um, really, again, brainstorm, like you said, and think about it and also use the job accommodation network. They can help the person walk through exactly or not exactly, but how to frame a request for an accommodation and how to negotiate those accommodations with employers. Okay, so if we, um, I think we're finished. Thank you everyone. If there's, if there are no other questions, keep us, keep, um, you know, the, the Washington, Dawn and Darren, updated with any types of, inf of webinars or other um, events or activities that you'd like to, to, to see or topics, I guess, would be really helpful. And we're always looking to make sure we're addressing what you are interested in. So thank you and stay well. Hope everyone has a good day, good weekend. Okay.